Hi, this is David at TED IELTS, and today I want to analyze a sample band 9 answer to an IELTS writing task 2 question in order to show you what exactly makes an essay successful. Now, there are many things that could make a great essay, and discussing them would probably require a video that was at least 2 hours long. But today, I just want to show you a few things that you might not have thought about before in order to show you what contributes to an essay getting the highest possible score. As always, this video is divided into chapters, which you can use to navigate. I will start by talking about whether or not sample IELTS essays are actually worthwhile or not. Then I'll group the things I want to talk about into the four criteria by which all IELTS essays are judged. That's task achievement, coherence and cohesion, lexical resource, and grammatical range and accuracy. If you have a special interest in any one of these areas, you can skip ahead to that, but I think it's better to watch the whole video. Also, you can turn on the subtitles if you have trouble following everything that I say. Right, let's jump into today's lesson. Before we begin this lesson properly, I feel I should give a sort of disclaimer. Band 9 sample answers are probably not as useful or important as you might think they are, and there are a few things that you must consider before you use them. Firstly, not all essays that are labeled Band 9 sample answers are really good enough to get a Band 9 in a real IELTS test. As I've said many times before on this channel and elsewhere, most IELTS materials are made by people who can't actually speak English very well and who do not understand the exam. These people tend to write essays that are crammed full of words they found in the middle of the dictionary, but which are incorrectly used. These are absolutely not helpful. But let's put them aside for the moment. Let's say you find a sample answer that really is good enough to get band 9. What can you learn from these? Well, if you use them properly, you can learn quite a lot, but many English learners seem to think of these essays as something they need to reproduce. They tend to view them as the correct way of writing an essay, when in fact it is just one possible example of how an essay could be written. As such, please note that whether you're using my sample answers or anyone else's, you should not view them as something you need to copy in any way. Use them instead for inspiration. Maybe you can find some words or phrases there that are helpful, or perhaps the structure is different than in your own essay. You might also find that the writer has put forth their ideas in a very clear way, or there may be some interesting ideas that you had not thought about before. All of this is to say, of course, that sample band 9 answers can be useful, but that you should not be overly reliant upon them. Considering that, let's look at our question and answer for today. Let's start by looking at the question, because all great IELTS essays must start from there. Here is the question that we will be answering. It says, in many countries today, many highly qualified graduates struggle to find employment. What factors may have caused this situation? What can be done about it? First of all, let's think what this question means and what our answer should include. It seems pretty straightforward to me. The fundamental issue is that graduates with good qualifications are finding it difficult to get jobs. We need to talk about why that has happened and what could be done to fix the situation. As you can see then, it is a cause and solution question. To this question, I would give a four paragraph answer. First of all, my introduction would briefly explain the situation, then I would give an essay outline that said what would come next. My first body paragraph would look at the factors that caused it, and the second would pose some suggestions for fixing the problem. Finally, there would be a short conclusion. Here is my sample answer, and don't worry if the text is too small to read. We will cover each part of it in this video, and I will also post the link on my website for you to read at your own time. The link will be down below. Now let's look at why it would be a successful answer by exploring the band descriptors. What makes this essay successful in terms of task achievement? 
This part of the test may seem subjective and frustrating because we all have different ideas about issues, particularly ones such as employment and education, which are naturally going to vary from culture to culture. Please note that there are no right and wrong answers in an IELTS exam, and even a strange answer could be successful if it was pre presented intelligently. The important thing to note from the band descriptors is that your essay must fully address all parts of the question and that it is fully developed with relevant, fully extended and well-developed ideas. One of the biggest problems people face here is cramming too many ideas into their essay. It is impossible to develop your essay sufficiently if you make it into a vast list of supporting arguments. Instead, pick one or two ideas and then develop them. Let's look at the second paragraph of my essay. I've picked an idea, which is that there are simply too many graduates nowadays. You might agree with me or disagree with me, but that's not important. Maybe there is a better idea, but again, it doesn't matter because the important thing is that my topic sentence is very clear and each of the sentences that follow it directly support it. The first sentence states my idea in simple terms. The second explains the issue from an education standpoint, with the third making the result very clear. There are too many graduates. The final two sentences tie this to employment and show precisely why having so many graduates causes high unemployment rates. An examiner might read this and think, hey, I had a better idea. But they could not fault me for how mine was explained, and that is the key to understanding task achievement. It is not about the right idea or the wrong idea, it is about explaining and developing your ideas logically. When it comes to coherence and cohesion, there is a lot to consider, but fundamentally it is all about presenting your ideas in a way that guides the reader logically from one point to the next. This means you need a good structure that groups your ideas sensibly, and also that you need your ideas to be connected from one clause or sentence to the next. I showed you my structure earlier, and that's where all good essays should begin. My essay has four paragraphs, which is really all you need for a cause and solution essay, or pretty much any other type of essay for that matter. I devoted one paragraph to the causes and one to the solutions, so that fulfills the requirements for organization. But structure is easy. You could learn it in a few hours. What is harder is having progression and linking your sentences. In terms of progression, I explained in the previous chapter about how each of the supporting sentences in a body paragraph develop the, top, the topic sentence. This is a good start, but it does not guarantee good progression. I like to think of paragraph structure in terms of making a big statement then making it more and more and more specific until you get into the fine details using examples or hypothetical statements to link the minute details back to the bigger picture. Doing this isn't easy. Firstly, you need to think logically and plan your essay, and then you need to use clear language to guide the reader. In my third paragraph, I started with a transitional statement that joined the ideas from the end of paragraph two to the main idea of paragraph three. The main idea started with the first thing to do, which is incredibly clear and easy to understand. The reader could not possibly be confused by what I'm saying. Again, my topic sentence presents a broad idea followed by another idea that defines it more clearly. This is followed by a sentence that uses referencing effectively to convey a hypothetical scenario to make my suggestion clear to the reader. I say, this would allow them. Many people forget that the use of words like this and them is essential for, good, for a good coherence and cohesion score. Finally, I would ask you to look at my essay and tell me, how many cohesive devices have I used? How many sentences begin with those classic IELTS phrases on the one hand, on the other hand, for example, and so on. I would argue that thankfully, in addition, and in conclusion are the only ones I've used. That's because an essay that, that intuitively guides its reader it 
is better than one that uses many, many cohesive devices. In fact, it clearly says in the band descriptors that overusing them would cause your score for this section to be around band 6 or at most band 7. If you want to understand coherence and cohesion fully, then check out the video I made a few weeks ago. It goes into a lot of detail and will help you understand what is probably the most difficult part of the band descriptors. Whilst coherence and cohesion is probably the most difficult part of the band descriptors, lexical resource is surely the most misunderstood. That's because IELTS teachers all around the world are busy telling their students to use advanced vocabulary. It is, quite frankly, an idiotic approach, and these people are responsible for countless disappointing exam results. What you need to think of when it comes to IELTS writing is using language in an accurate way and using vocabulary that is topic-specific. Sticking a so-called advanced word in your essay should not even cross your mind. I think most of the people watching my video would look at my essay and understand all of the words I've used. That is because there are no words here that I've plucked at random from the middle of a dictionary. However, all of my words are used correctly, and that is by far the most important thing. There are also some words that are specific to the topics of education and employment, which is very helpful. If we look at paragraph 3 again, we can see some examples of this. The phrase higher education is used rather than repeating university over and over. Alternative routes is used to suggest going another way into employment. Importantly, this is a natural phrase that a native speaker would know rather than an awkward expression that has been cobbled together from words we would not intuitively use. The phrase vocational training program is excellent because this is a really topic specific phrase. It falls into the category of uncommon vocabulary, but you will note that it is not some insanely obscure phrase. This is the sort of language that you should aim for, accurate and relevant. Beyond that, we have workforce and theoretical knowledge. Importantly, my words are collocated correctly. That means they go together in natural ways. When I say look for employment after graduation, it might seem easy to you. You might be surprised this is in a band 9 essay, but a lot of IELTS candidates would write seek for employment or misuse the noun job seeker by forcing it into a verb form. I cannot stress enough the importance of accuracy here. If you want to learn more about lexical resource, and I think everyone should, then you should check out my video on it. This is a deep dive into a profoundly misunderstood subject. Whilst the first three criteria have mildly confusing names, grammatical range and accuracy is really very obvious. It is about both range and accuracy. This means that your essay should use grammar in a correct way, that's accuracy, but it should also use different structures, that's range. You don't have to go completely over the top and use every single verb tense, clause and sentence type that your English teacher ever taught you, but it's best not to sound repetitive. Going back to paragraph 2, we saw a breakdown of the sentences that I used to explain the causes of graduate unemployment. What do you notice about these five sentences? It is not obvious when they are written properly in an essay, but when formatted like this, we can see that they vary in length. This is something that good writers do without even thinking about it. Whilst it is not the most important part of an essay, it does affect the reader's appreciation of it, and it can impact meaning. Note that the shortest sentence here functions to present a simple point after a very long sentence filled with detail. This is almost like a mid-paragraph conclusion that forces the reader to pay attention. If we look at the first three sentences, we can see a compound sentence with a dependent clause that comes first, then a complex sentence, and then a simple sentence. There's a compound complex sentence at the end of paragraph two, meaning that all four sentence types have been included. This is not strictly necessary, but it does help in terms of range. I've used relative clauses and switched back and forth between active and passive voice where necessary. 
I've used modals intelligently, and all my subjects and verbs are in the correct form. Even my punctuation is right. This may seem like a very difficult thing to achieve, and indeed grammar is the hardest part of the writing test, in my opinion. However, it's worth noting that the band descriptors explicitly state that you can make rare minor errors and still get band 9, so you can take some encouragement from that. I really hope that this video has been useful for you. As I stated earlier, sample essays are not always particularly helpful and can sometimes even cause further problems for the people who try to use them. On my website, I have many sample answers that I have written and each of them comes with some description that explains why I have written the essay in that way. I think this is really important because otherwise there is not much you can really learn from them. The important thing to take away from today's lesson though is that whilst getting a high score for IELTS is certainly not easy, there's really no secret to it. For task achievement, you just have to provide a fully developed answer. For coherence and cohesion, you have to organize and link your ideas logically. For lexical resource and grammatical range and accuracy, you have to make sure that your words are used correctly and that you don't repeat yourself too much. That's pretty much the core of it. And anyone who's teaching you tricks and tips is just misleading you. If this video has been helpful for you, please consider giving it a like and think about subscribing if you want more high quality videos like this one. My aim is to cut through all of the bad advice that is online and help everyone get a better score in their next IELTS exam.